Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of A Handful of Hope. I am so happy and grateful to have John with us today, who's the CEO of Green Room Strategy, a Santa Barbara-based consulting practice focused on, chan on omnichannel marketing and strategic partnerships around the convergence of music, media, tech, events, and influential people. John was previously VP of Client Partnerships on Honorcom, and has had the pleasure to work with clients such as Alan Parsons, Warner Music Group, the Santa Barbara Bowl, Brad Bird, Johnny Iron, AEG, Jack Johnson, the Libera Theater, Rudderish. I'm going to horribly mispronounce that last name, John. You're going to have to shit save me with that Mahantapa. <laughs> Rudresh. Also, say that one more time. Rudresh Mahantapa, okay. incredible sax player. Yeah. Shelterbox, Bishop, Lamont, Marquis Brands, UCSB, and much more. He has been married to his wife, Nancy, for 18 years and has two vibrant children. John currently serves his community as the president of the Rotary Club Montecito. John, welcome, and thank you so much for being here. Thanks, uh, Jesse. It's an honor to be here. Yeah, and I've been following what you do, and it's so great that you're getting you know, these inspirational words out to people who really need it right now. So anything I can do to help. Yeah, you know what, John, it's been really cool about this is it's been, and this was kind of lead into what your expertise is, is I've had so many conversations and made so many connections with people that I would have never otherwise in doing this. And what I found during this time is that people's inboxes are more open to receive emails and that people's hearts are more open to do maybe projects like this that they might not have otherwise had time for. I know that, you know, building community and building connections is really much of what you've built your career on and hoping that you might speak a little bit to that and the power of that. Yeah, yeah, it's a great point. Uh, you know, it feels, you know, we're not going to sugarcoat it. Like, things are hard right now for everybody, but the the upside of that is that people are more open to collaborating. They're looking for opportunity, looking to build deeper relationships. We're looking at a lot of the the things that we thought were really valuable, we're spending all our time on, might not be so valuable anymore. And yeah. what are the things that that are the core that are sustaining that really nurture and feed our souls and really uh, help our community. You know, people are, are open to doing more of that right now because all these things that we spent time on just kind of got wiped away real overnight. So I think it's, it's, you know, a really positive thing that now people we're all home. We're all on zoom. We're able to, uh, access people that might be busy otherwise or difficult to get a hold of and they're open to collaborating they're open to talking making introductions but the key is it's not digital schmoozing you know i, re I can't stress that enough like uh, and schmoozing is you know going to the conference going to you know the digital version of that running around to everybody you get invited to a barbecue and you're passing out your business card to everybody it's an immediate turn off uh, so I, I almost don't even like the word networking because it feels like it's something that that you turn on and turn off versus something that you are or mm -hmm. what you consistently do. So I would say just frame it in terms of building relationships and that never ends, period. You, you're always building relationships. You're always adding value, creating value. I don't even talk about myself or what I do often, you know, in the first parts of the conversation because then I can listen and if I listen, I can focus on what, what's valuable to them. And now I know, oh, okay, this person needs a good attorney or this person needs uh, financing for their startup or this person needs a technical co-founder. And then my mental Rolodex, I can connect them and create value through those relationships. And if you do that, then it'll come back to you. But you don't, like, I don't even worry about myself. It's like the Zig Ziglar quote, uh, you can get anything you want in life if you help enough people get what they want. Mm. And I think that's so true. It's just, um, we have this amazing technology. We're doing this remotely right now. We can reach lots of people globally, but it really does come back to these one-on-one -on -one relationships and genuinely caring and creating value for other people. You know, I, I love that you're saying that because I feel like that's such a profound shift from so much of the narrative we hear out in the world of me, 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 me. And it's so much of it is like, what's in it for me? 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 And to hear that real, true relationships, personal and professional, are going to be built and nurtured on the we, or not even so much me or we first, but you. 
like, how can I give, right? Not so much how can I get, but how can I give? It's such a contradictory thought to what a lot of times we're trained to think. And I'm wondering if, do you find that, I guess, the key to building a, a, a really great relationship is it giving first and is it is it is it that simple that the people who struggle with this they're trying to get and the people who thrive in this are trying to give um i think that it's just getting away from the transactional mentality it's it's like playing long-term games with long-term people and building long relationships over the long term so if you're just jumping in right now and say all right now i got to network with as many people as i possibly can and get my card out and tell them I'm a loan officer, I'm a realtor or whatever, and get it because my business is crashing. Like it's understandable why people do that. Cause it's, it, you know, you kind of get freaked out and you need to get more connections, more business. But the real, the reality is like, if you're just starting right now, like it, it's not the ideal time, but if you didn't before then start now, mm -hmm. you have to show up for people before, you know, in advance. And then that makes a difference. So like, for example, you know, I work in the music industry and I would go to lots and lots of artists concerts and I promote them and introduce them to people. I would drive to LA uh, from Santa Barbara just to see their show. And they're like, wow. Um, you know, most people won't even drive across to LA to come see me. You drove all the way from Santa Barbara. It makes a difference for me. It helps because I'm obsessed with music and it's what I love to do and I love to support them. But if you show up for people first, and you help them and create value for them over the long term, they know that there's no ulterior motive other than being helpful. And then the connections just open wide up. What are some ways people can show up for others, John, especially now? Because I, 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 I'm with you and I could hear the resistance for some might be, well, you know, I'm, I'm stuck. I'm quarantined, lockdown, sheltering, placing. I'm not sure about my job. I'm, you know, there's all this disruption. How am I supposed to really show up for others right now? What are some creative ways that people could do that? Yeah, I think we're seeing that with a lot of different community organizations, nonprofits, people making masks for first responders. People, again, it it doesn't always have to be about your business, and oftentimes it doesn't need to be because even in your line of work, everybody has different hobbies, different interests, different charities, different passions. And those are things that community are built around. And so if you get involved in that community and you give and you help organize something, people respect that and, and they want to hang out with you more. And then, and then you start meeting other people through those groups and those mutual affinities. I also think it's important um, when you're first meeting somebody for the first time, you know, mentally we all think like, all right, okay, I just met Jesse Brissendine. I mean, we've known each other for a while, but I'm just saying like, if I just met you, then I think mentally, how are you on my radar? Mm -hmm. um, are, do we have friends in common? Do we, are we, in, you know, do we go to the same school together or the same alma mater? Do we, you know, that's just mentally what somebody starts with and so, if, if you can show ways, and again, with social media, with a lot of these digital things like Zoom, it's a lot easier to build those connections and demonstrate those connections. But I think if you just get out and do things and take action, again, even online, just even coordinating things and being part of initiatives that are genuinely helping people, then people will say, oh, okay, I care about animal welfare. This person's actively doing something in that that's how they're on my radar. Okay, cool. And then by the way, we know these other two friends that also care about that. And then you're building community around these specific initiatives. And then again, people do business with people that they like and trust. Yeah. And those, those give more concrete things to say, okay, cool. This person's legit or verified, or they're not going to waste my time, or they're not going to make me look bad for introducing them to other people in my network uh, because I can see the proofs in the pudding they've been actively at this. And again, even if you're just starting right now, just get started on the things that you care about, but talk to people, listen to them and figure out ways to create value for them. I love you made that distinction, John, because I, even as you were saying it, I was thinking in my own personal experience and I noticed that I will instantly shut down if someone like, I barely know first time they reach out to me 
is reaching out asking me about, oh, how do you know so-and-so? Or, hey, can you introduce me to this person or get me, get me this? But on the other hand, I, and I always tell people, I'm really easy. You come to me and talk about professional wrestling or something like that or some sort of cause that you're passionate about. And I, I get really excited about it. And so the, I find myself becoming fast friends with people who will lead with, uh, you know, bringing either things that they're genuinely passionate about or trying to understand things that I'm genuinely passionate about. And quite the opposite. It, it's, it's almost instant shutdown for people who are just coming to uh, get who you know, who you're associated with, all those types of things. And I'm wondering, like, Again, this goes back to kind of there's this a lot of me mentality. How many people do you think? Well, I, and that's maybe that's too that's too specific. I, I don't expect you to come up with how many people, but how like how many people or what percentage of people maybe do you feel like fail at the whole relationship building because they're so fixated on the me piece? I think it's a good chunk, and I think it's just like you know, I mean, it even goes back to like junior high, and you have all these cliques, and you have all these politicking and um and then you have your like your core group of friends and and that, that still happens you know <laughs> forever i think and so um i think for people that are kind of stuck in that me mentality it's just important to to branch out beyond that and and realize like you don't have to be the expert in everything and if you try to appear to be something you're not or more knowledgeable you're not people are going to see right through that Mm -hmm. If you show up as being curious and wanting to learn more and wanting to contribute, people will respect that. And then they'll, that's why if you, I've seen so many people try to put on these appearances and be somebody they're not. And then it just backfires and then they're frustrated and it's frustrating for the other person. And, and you also have to realize like, like you're mentioning, you know, the celebrity part, it's like, Oh, you know, so-and-so can you introduce me? Well, you potentially putting that person you're asking in a bad situation because now they have to put their name on the line and like what's the value for that that celebrity or that person to know you um just so you can get a cool selfie and experience i mean that's not valuable for that other person so there's chains of value that you have to think ahead on and there are ways that you can create value for them and make that person look good for introducing you to them so, um, you know, I don't know if that directly answers your question, but I think it's, it's just important for people to, to yeah, think, I think about it, how, how they're, what requests they're asking yeah. are affecting multiple people, not just themselves directly. Cause again, otherwise it's just about you and what you really want. Yeah. No, I think that's so important, John, to say, especially right now, because we're in this time of a lot of disruption. As you said, it's really hard for a lot of us. Everybody's struggling. Everything's going through. A, a, everybody's going through this. Everybody has family, friends that they are hopeful for their health with and hopeful for their careers, hopeful for all those types of things. And fear is such a, there's so much fear being pushed out and fear is a very me mentality, right? When, when we're in fear, we think survive, fight or flight. How am I going to survive? So it's me, me, me. And I'm glad you said that because what the tendency in fear is to be, right, is it's to ask a question that's going to satisfy an immediate need. So it's, it's, let me ask the question that, hey, John, you know, so-and-so, can they give me a job? Hey, John, you know, so-and-so, I, I really need to book this big venue or whatever it is, because if I book that big venue, then it will cover me for what I'm on the line for from this cancellation from the coronavirus, right? It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's this short-term line of thinking where we're thinking, I'm at A, I need B, I have to get C because it's going to get there, as opposed to looking at it and saying, I'm no different than anyone else. And maybe instead of going to John and saying, hey, John, can you get me A, C so I can have B, I could go to John and say, hey, John, I, I, I heard that you're trying to build F and G. You know, I have a little bit of experience with building F and G. You know, maybe I could help you with that. Yeah, that's, yeah so it's a really great point. And I, and I even see that, you know, working in these marketing agencies and different groups where because we work with a lot of celebrities, uh, people will come off and say, well, I want to do anything to, you know, it's almost like a desperation play where like, I'll just do anything to 
to uh, work with you and just get my foot in the door. And it's like, I don't need that. I need somebody to figure out what the problems are and then bring me a solution. And, you know, if somebody shows up and does that, then it's like, oh yeah, I'll find, I'll find an internship or I'll introduce you to somebody that needs that. But it's, it's not coming from that place of like, or the, the flip side, the entitlement, like, I went to this school, I got this degree, and so I should be starting at this spot. Uh, I know a guy that's a director, and he would get that, where people come out of film school and say, well, I want to be the director, I want to be the producer. He's like, I'm the director, like, you know, yeah, yeah. What, what problem can you solve for me right now on, yeah. on my set? Yeah. Like, everybody wants the sexy jobs and the cool jobs, but yeah. if you focus on solving hard problems for people and getting good at that and and focusing on like, all right, well, how can we be resourceful? We have the, the internet at our fingertips and you can find out almost anything about it, any topic and, you know, just go jump on Google and do some research for somebody ahead of time. That's a, a quick way to create value for them. I want to make sure I emphasize that really quick for any of you out there who are watching this that are looking to build relationships, looking to expand personal professional reach, looking to, up level your career, asking yourself, pausing and asking yourself that question, what is the problem I can solve for them? What is the problem I can solve for the company? What is the problem I can solve for the individual? What is the problem I can solve for the organization? Talk about leading with massive value, right? Because everyone, every single human being, every single business on the planet, they have a bigger problem that they're trying to figure out and solve. And if you can put your mind in that framework, that's a framework of ultimate service it's a framework that 90 plus percent of the people are not going to be thinking. And it is the probably differentiating thing that can really separate you from everyone else. Because when everybody else is showing up, just trying to get a job, a promotion, a connection, a, a leg up, trying to get, you know, uh, a piece of the brand equity because they can get a selfie with someone. And you're actually coming to serve, but not only just serve a little but serve on the biggest level because you're thinking that way. That, that, that's a, that's a massive game changer. And there's, yeah. Gonna, and, you know, and there's going to be probably, as we come out of this, there's going to be a hell of a lot of problems to solve out there too. And if you're thinking in that way, instead of just trying to think of how can I take care of myself, but how can I contribute to solving the problems that are going to pop up with this, you're going to find that your potential to thrive is infinite beyond. Yeah. And it's, it's caring enough to see through the smoke screens and the pat answers to find out what the real problems are. Yes. So if you say, Hey, how are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. Well, are you really like, you know, yeah. and then people, if you, if you make them comfortable enough to open up, then they'll share what the real challenges are. And then you can say, Oh, well, I know so-and-so that has this skill. Maybe you should talk to them or maybe I could come pitch in and help you out for a couple hours or, you know, again, it just comes down to being helpful in solving problems and focused on, instead of avoiding the hard problems, just get good and get known for, all right, I'm going to help you figure that out. I don't have the answer right now. I'm not going to BS you, but let's figure this out. Then who's going to turn that down? And then even at the highest levels of, of business and community, people still will always have problems and they'll always need solid people that they can trust that are doing things for the right reasons that are creating value for them and they'll reciprocate. John, you and I were talking beforehand about the, there's that old adage. It's not who, you know, it's, or it's not what, you know, it's who, you know, and you were telling me that's not even true. There's actually another layer to it. That's even more important. I, w I want you to touch on that real quick. Yeah. It's, it's again, I mean, it's so easy to show up online and like people hear of you, but Will they vouch for you? Will they? So it's not who you know, but who will answer your calls? Who will answer your emails, your text? Who will vouch for you? Who will make introductions? Who will say, yeah, I want to work with them and bring you into that other level of community. And so you do that by, again, showing up for people in advance for going to their play or, or their book signing or, you know, whatever that they have going on in their life, going to their weddings or their kids' weddings and really genuinely being there for people. And if you do that over the long term, you're building real relationships. You know, that's a powerful actionable for everybody to take away is literally grab out and grab the, you know, the pen and the paper and make a list of 
people in your life or who you want to be in your life and just write down how can you show up for these people? How can you show up for them now? And how can you show up for them when we go back to where we're not sheltering in place and quarantining, all those types of things. And what you'll find is that there's ways that you can likely start showing up now. And there's ways that you may not have realized that you could start showing up that will be available to you after this is all over. But just having that mentality of, I mean, you've told me before about how many times you'll drive Santa Barbara to LA to see a show. And just for context, for those of you who aren't familiar with California, LA from Santa Barbara is about a 90 mile drive. Now that's irrelevant because driving from traffic. Santa Barbara to LA, traffic could take anywhere from two hours to five hours, depending on traffic. And so what John is saying here really is not that he's making this drive from Santa Barbara to LA, like he's willing to invest upwards of five hours of his time, one way, one way to go and see a concert of someone, not because he's trying to get anything, but because he's just trying to show up and support and give value. And that's a really powerful question to ask of yourself is, am I willing to make that five hour investment of my time? You know, am I willing to go out of my way to make those kinds of efforts for people? And if you're not, this is a wonderful time to start considering that. Yeah, and and with the, from a bandwidth perspective, you can't do that for everyone and everything. And sometimes it's just showing up to the local event that's down the street, and and I do that frequently too. But um, for the bigger things, it's just like who are the people that are important to you that you're willing to do that, and how blown away would you be if somebody did that for you? So, um, I, I yeah, and then also it's like I genuinely love live music and that's an exciting thing for me to go down and see that and then enjoy their concert and appreciate that. They like that too. Uh, so we bond more around that. If you're into fly fishing, maybe there's something around that or, or working on cars or whatever your hobby is, but uh, it, it's not going to work long-term if you don't re genuinely enjoy it. So that's why it's important to build community around the things that you like and then be inherently curious and branch out. Yeah. and try new things because you might be surprised at the things that that you were never interested in growing up and now you are because you know we evolve you know as you're saying that it reminds me of of a music story that plays in this with bon jovi's story of how he got his first radio airplay where he was you know bon jovi was not before he was bon jovi as we know him you know, he's some kid with his garage band trying to get out and he he's listening to the radio one night trying to figure out how he gets his name out there more and he hears the radio guy announcing saying well is anybody listening is anybody out there you know we'll, we'll take your request all these types of things and so he comes up with this idea that you know i wonder if that guy is just kind of lonely and bored there and he goes and orders a pizza and it's like a six pack of beer or something he comes over to the radio station knocks on the window holds the box of pizza and the beer and the radio guy says, you know, come on in. So they go in there and start talking. He just showed up to give this guy the beer. And, and he starts saying that he's got a local band. He's got this. He's got that. And the guy says, well, you guys any good? He said, yeah. And he goes, you have a demo tape? He's like, yeah. And he gives him it. And he says, well, you know, who knows if anybody's listening? So they play it like 2 o'clock in the morning or something like that. And it turns out that somebody was listening. They call in to ask about him. He's a local band. And, you know, it started to build from there. But the point was is that, Usually, probably one of the most the biggest names in music started with that whole concept that John's saying of leading with value, thinking of somebody else first before themselves. Yeah, yeah, it's a great story, and and you see where he is, yeah, from, from that. Um, yeah, and, and again, it just it's not like a you jump in and you network and meet some people and then you jump out. It's just rewiring yourself to give, and if you do that, people will reciprocate. John, people are at home, <clears throat> sheltering in place right now, quarantine, lockdown, whatever the terminology is. If you could listen, recommend one podcast people should listen to during this time, what would you recommend? Boy, it's a good question. There's so many good ones, and I've been listening to quite a few. The Knowledge po Project uh, is a really good one. Um, I like A16Z because it's a tech podcast, but they go into a lot of different things, and it expands my mind. But those are two off the top of my head that – that I think have been really interesting. But again, just that's the beauty of it. There's a wealth of knowledge available for free on podcasts right now. So yeah. let your curiosity, um, you know, be your guide, but then also branch out and say, well, hey, um, 
you know, with all this stuff going on with the virus, biotech is probably going to be a really hot area for forever go, going yeah. forward. I don't know anything about biotech. Let me hop on and listen to some of those podcasts. And at first, you're not going to know what they're talking about, and it'll just go over your head. And then after a while, you'll start picking that up. You'll start seeing who the trusted experts are, and then you can kind of go down that rabbit hole, read their books, their podcasts, and and just open up that new avenue. And maybe that could be a new career path for you. Or, or just, you you know, innovation happens from cross-pollinating uh, ideas and networks and things like that. And if you're on, only staying in your own little bubble, then you're going to miss out on a lot of those opportunities. And so I think just follow your genuine curiosity and then don't limit yourself based on what you've always been into. The world's pretty amazing and there's a lot of great resources. Just jump in. I have to write that down. I love how you just said it. Innovation happens from cross-pollination. Yeah. Yeah. So something like, um, you know, even the innovation of a drive through restaurant, which sounds funny that it's innovating, but, you know, it did change the game for a lot of fast food restaurants and people were looking at dry cleaning and restaurants didn't have that before. And so it's, it's, it could be something that's so dead simple in one industry or one area and people aren't looking at it because they're, again, they're all in their own little bubble, yeah. their own echo chamber. So the more you get outside of that, and um, you know, that's one of the biggest values I've seen joining the Rotary Club was I get to network and build relationships with people across a lot of different walks of life, different industries, very community centric giving people, but they're not people I would normally hang out with and go to concerts just because again, different walks of life, different ages. and um, But we become family because we meet you know, all the time and that just opens up the network and opens up the possibilities and opportunities to serve. Are there any books you'd recommend people read? Yeah, one of the, the best relationship building books that really flipped the switch for me was uh, Never Eat Alone by Keith Ferrazzi. It's kind of a classic right now, but that's the one that really sh highlighted because I hate, I was a little bit shy and I hated people that schmoozed and that really turned me off. And he's like, no, it's focusing on, on these kind of core concepts, just getting outside of your comfort zone, meeting people, creating value for them. That's a great one. There's also the, the formula by Barabasi. And uh, he was a network scientist that studied you know, what makes people successful? What kind of um, what kind of things from a, uh, again, a networking standpoint um, and relationship building standpoint would make people successful? And the, the keys there were um, preferential attachment. So if you're affiliated with premier names, which is why people like Ivy League schools and they like, you know, big brands and things like that, or you worked at Apple, that opens up a lot of doors for you. Mm. So being attached to the right names, um, having more horses in the race or more lottery tickets per se. So it's just more at bats. So a lot of people will try something for a while and they'll give up. But if you can find ways to attach yourselves to these names, then you get reinforced and trusted. Um, again, it goes back to how are they on my radar? And uh, so read read the formula by Bar Barabasi. It's really good. And then real quick, movie or documentary you'd recommend people watch? Oh, there's so many. Um, I mean, lately I really fell in love with Echo in the Canyon. Again, I'm into music, but it just showed the the Laurel Canyon music scene back in the 60s that the came out of, you know, we had the birds and Crosby, Stills and Nash and um, just so many incredible artists and game-changing musicians came out of this, you know, Frank Zappa, they all came out of this little community and they didn't know what they were building. They were just creating together. And um, I would highly recommend that. It's, it's a really cool one. Everyone, this is another one you're going to want to rewatch. I think John shared so many great tips and tools for building up relationships with people. And whether you're a seasoned relationship builder or you're really considering it now for the first time, now truly is a great time to really work on building your relationships. As John highlighted, everyone is going through this. And what that, what that means is, is often everybody's looking for ways to help and support. 
And people that you may have once sought out of reach, they might be a little bit more accessible. People who were once a little accessible might even be more willing to help than they once were before. But leading with value is gonna be key with this. Don't just reach out and ask for people to help you. Reach out and ask at how you can help them. Because I promise you those people that you would love to get help from are probably trying to do things too. And if you can reach out and help them and support what, there are, what their dreams are, they're gonna be very likely to wanna to reciprocate and help you with your dreams too. So those types of things, grab that pen and paper and make a list of how can you serve, how can you show up for people. That it's not, it's not so much who you know and what you know, it's who's going to be willing to go to bat for you. And how do you need to show up for someone? How do you need to show up for them to build that level of like and trust with that individual? That they would reach, open up their Rolodex and connect you with a job, an opportunity, or a person. They'd vouch for your talent, your ability, your skill as a writer, whatever that is. This time is a time yeah. that people call disruption, a pause, whatever it is. So pause and consider who do you want in your life and what do you want your life to look like for this next chapter as we emerge from this and start to build those relationships now because the relationships you start to build today will be the dinner party of success that you're going to celebrate with in the very near future. So John, this has been absolutely incredible, man. Thank you so much for sharing and we all appreciate you. This has been incredible. Thank you. Th thank you, Jesse. Uh, one more point I do want to end with is that if you're living in a, like a small town and say, well, I'm not connected to, you know, X or I, I'm in just this little bubble. I don't know a lot of people. Don't worry about that. Again, that's what this technology is opening up. Focus on the self work, building up your own skills, your, your writing, you know, study sales, study marketing, uh, they translate for any industry and there's so many great free resources and then you can just start you know using social media using these technologies to find out what's valuable for people and the gatekeepers are a lot more limited right now than they have been so now is actually an opportune time to create new possibilities new opportunities i've been on calls with people in mumbai and denmark and don't think just in your own local area think you know your world is global and there's opportunities out there. And, and I know it's frustrating. I know it's stressful. I lost 90% of my clients because the music industry just stopped, but we're maintaining these relationships and I'm sure we'll go back to work together when things turn around. In the meantime, you know, let's get creative and let me know how I can help you. That's awesome, John. Thank you, man. Thanks. We'll see everybody next time. Another edition of a handful of hope. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.